All right, so we have a little bit of snow now. It's not a lot of snow. It's probably like, I don't know, dusting an inch or so on the uh, the driveway, but it's good enough for me to test out the mapping that I did to make sure that it's, you know, getting all the areas that I want and it's not either bumping into stuff or it's, you know, messing up uh, something that I don't like so I can change different settings. And to be quite frank with you, you will have to um, mess with these settings to dial it in the you know the first go around i'm not expecting perfection i'm only going to change the uh, route that it does for mapping i might even have to remap some areas to um, make it do things or i might have to change the throwing direction because uh, you know you really don't know exactly what it's going to do until you hit the play and you watch it so this is not going to be a test of its ability to clear snow it's more going to be a validation of my mapping and where I'm throwing snow to see if all that's set up correct for when the real storm comes, I'll be ready to go. All right, so now I've opened up the Yarbo app. You can see I'm connected to it. Now um, you can see it's charging. It's fully charged on the wireless charging pad there. And obviously I wanna go out and test it now. There's lots of things here. If I go into my mapping section, you can see my overall map here. And you can see I'm actually on the docking station there on the, this bottom left corner of the overall map. And then I have it doing the barn, which is where we're at. And then it drives a long distance um, down on that bottom um, side there. That's just a straight pathway. And then it gets to the circle, which is the C shape uh, section. Then I have the front pathway, uh, which is the walkway to the front door. And then I have the garage approach over there in the on the top there. So um, I can have it do any one of those areas or combination of them. So a work plan here is where you can add those different areas um, to it. So you know I have. Um, just one area or two areas or three or four areas. So I'll have it do all of them and that's actually um, This one here and this is where I just go in there and select which plans And then I think the order of which they're listed is going to be the order of which it does them So I have it doing the circle first and then the garage and then coming back and doing the front on its way back to the barn Doing the barn last and now you can see it there on the schedule So I could schedule it to automatically do this stuff In fact, it can detect snow. I think after an inch or two of snow falls it will automatically go out but for me, I'm just going to manually send it off on its way here. So if I um, go in here and I can uh, pick which one I want it to do, this is all of them. All right, so if I just hit play here and then hit start, it will start doing its thing. So we can see here that it's saying it's uh, 2,600 uh, square feet and it'll take an hour and 41 minutes to do it. So now in here, what I can do is I can zoom in and I can see the lines that it's going to follow. So I can zoom in right here and I can actually watch it and see what lines it's going to do um, as it works. And therefore you can track it and you know where it's gonna go next. Now, of course you can watch that and pay attention to it um, when you set up the work plan initially and you wanna pay attention to these grid lines because you can see if it's going to do kind of a logical path or not. So it looks like it's finishing up the last row here on the circle on the way over to the garage. All right, so here it is coming around the corner to the garage and you can see the garage approach that I have. I'll have it clean up.
right, well, here it is. It's all done in the garage now. And you can see it did a pretty good job. Now, of course, you're going to have to shovel a little bit up against the building. So I'm going to give it a little bit of space off of uh, the building so that it has a little bit of room. But, you know, call it, I got it probably as close as six inches, maybe a little bit um, more in a couple spots. And it did a pretty good job of scraping down to the bottom. And then it does a pretty good job of blowing the snow um, in places that it's not already cleared. Now, if it can't make a yellow line that you've, you know, directed to throw the snow, it will sometimes throw the snow on places that it has not cleared yet, and then it'll have to go and clear both the original snow as well as the new snow that it blew. But overall, it does come out with just as clear of a surface as I would do with a snow blower. It just, um, you know, you gotta shovel a little bit up along um, a, uh, a building or whatnot. So if we go over here and we go, you can see here, you know, this is why I like running the test is, you know, I went a little bit into the grass here. Um, so I might want to adjust my pathway from the garage to the circle to be a little bit further out just so I miss the grass um, on here. So that's just something that you have to pay attention to when you do this testing. So again here, this is an intentional stop because I'm going to run the snow plow up and down here. So I just cleared um, through the circle area here. Looks like I did a pretty good job all there. If I look though here, you know, I have a 2023 version of the Yarbo. You know, I, that's what I had last year and I ran. And I felt like I mapped this 2024 version the same way, which put me right up along the grass. But this 2024 version, at least right now, it appears to be giving a little bit more of a safety barrier in the, uh, in the clearing areas, probably about six inches of snow, which I personally don't like. I want to have it clear all the way up. So I'm going to see if I either can adjust some settings. I have a smaller overlap. I don't know if I do the bigger overlap, it will add that. Or if I need to go back and remap and actually map with the blower a little bit into the grass uh, to do that. So that's a little preference for me personally. But again, I ended up with a fairly clean surface. You know, not a lot of um, excess or um, you're not scraping down the bottom. That's an adjustable number you can have there as well is how, do you, how far down does the module scrape the ground. If you're on gravel or something, you can obviously raise it up a little bit. Now here for the walkway, I would say did not do as good of a job on the walkway as I would have liked. And I think it's because it's a tighter, smaller area. So it had um, to kind of maneuver around and that's where like up against these steps, you know, when I mapped it, I had to give it a little bit of space um, because it has to turn around and it'll hit the step, you know, as it swings this big rear end down around. So that one requires a little bit of shovel space there and obviously it can't do the steps. So you have a little bit of work, but again, it does a pretty good job here. Um, so along the circle, it's actually finishing up right now over at the barn. We'll walk over to it and, uh, and see what, how it's done. looks like it's got a little bit more, um, time left to go over there, but, uh, it's getting close to being done. It's been, I have to look at the clock. I think it's been about an hour and a half, uh, total. And I think it estimated about an hour and a half. So it's actually doing a pretty good job. And in fact, it should have run a lot faster because I have a bug in the system right now where it kept stopping on me and saying weak GPS. I sent the diagnostics to, uh, to Yarbo and uh, you know they'll look into it. It did not do that in the past. So um, that's something I do see is they do run into some bugs in the software every once in a while, but they are pretty good at responding to it and then uh, putting in a update to fix those kind of issues. So it certainly slowed it down today um, but even so with the slowdowns, it still pretty much met the estimated timing that it thought it would take. All right, so here it is finishing up the, um, the whole uh, project, the work plan. You see it says it has six minutes left and uh, it's at 48% battery. So, um, you know, did not run um, the battery all the way down uh, to do this, whatever it was, 2,600 um, square feet. Um, but you can see that it, uh, it's 12.30, I think I started around 11. Um, so it's been about an hour and a half, so it's actually running pretty close to its estimated time, but it is stopping. It probably will do it here in a little bit, where it's thinking that it loses GPS signal. But to the best of my ability, it, it's not losing it. I think it's just a bug um, in the system, but that caused it to slow down certainly a few times where it stopped um, for a couple seconds, and then several seconds. There it goes, it just lost it, it says. Um, and then it, uh, it starts back up again.
right, so its final step is it goes back and it self aligns with the charging pad and then it starts charging back up and you can see uh, maybe a little light right here that is showing you that it is uh, charging and uh, in the app will show you it's charging so then it's ready to go. Now, if you actually ran so long that you ran the battery down, it will automatically go back here and charge itself up to like 80% and then it'll go back out and uh, and complete that same work plan. It won't redo what it's already done. It will start wherever it, uh, it stopped to recharge. But as you can see, it can do a large area. Now, obviously if you have more snow, then it's gonna use more battery for that auger to be spinning harder. But I can clear this whole area with um, you know, basically all my normal snowfall that I get. And again, you can send this out every, every time um, that it's snowing and when it gets two or three inches it can go out and clean it can still be snowing on it and it'll go back out again and clean so it just it keeps up with the storm is the idea you don't let you know two or three feet fall and then send this out that would be stupid but if it snows three inches four inches you send it out and it will complete the task in there hour and hour, hour and a half and then it'll go back out again after another three inches of fill so that's how it's designed to work and so long as you understand that this is not a faster way to get snowing done or snow plowing done and it's not a more efficient uh, path you have to understand that and get over it and uh, just let it go and do its thing and just know that you don't have to um, be out there in the cold doing it yourself so that's the beauty of the yarbo and that's really what it's designed to do it's got some software bugs still that they're working through but they are responsive so um early users like me do have to um, kind of struggle a little bit through some of their software bugs but as they get those things figured out this thing's going to be more and more capable add more features so stay tuned for more videos of um, all the new things that it can do and then of course uh, like and subscribe on uh, the video and my channel if you want to see more thanks